These are three glasses for what's called the experiment system. You can read back there. Now, these are LCD-based 3D glasses. Basically, there's a little detector in the corner here. And there is a infrared um, flashing device which flashes out and sends a, a, a pulse into the auditorium. These detectors then pick up that pulse and then make the glasses switch from left to the right so you can't see out of one and you can't see out of the other. So quickly that you, you, you don't know it. Um, these are the, the expand system is the system mostly used, it is actually used for the um, uh, IMAX system. Um, and you might be able to see the B, the B, the Dolby, like through these. This is the cleanest picture I've seen, no crosstalk whatsoever. It looks like that. It's amazing. I um, much prefer any of the other systems, but then again, it's also the most expensive. So it's not the cheapest. Well, because these glasses are where the costs are, and these glasses are very expensive compared to everyone else's. Quickly, to go over some other aspects of the expand system. The expand system is uh, quite light here because we can move it the because there's not a lot of kit involved. Unlike the um, Dolby, which involves a spinning wheel which goes into the projector, so it's only needs to for certain projectors, and that uh, wheel goes between the lock the lamp and the integrator. Um, so you the integrator, you've got the lamp basically uh, making all the light. And that light is bounced around and goes to these parabolic um, glass lenses to focus the light into the integrator. The integrator basically focuses the light. It's a little bit like a laser channel which focuses the light, but it focuses it or puts it into a way which is better suited for pushing into the um, light engine where the DMDs or the DLP chips are. This makes it so it's the right shape and the best use of all the light possible, not wasting it like on the edges or not hitting the DMD. Um, and it goes before that and it has to, it's a two segment wheel and it has to spin an extremely fast, um, extremely fast, like very fast, it has to be very well, um, you have to be very careful when you use I was involved in this one installation and you have to handle the kit gloves because it's been so fast if you get into the roller, etc. Um, yeah, and it loses its stability, it's just not good. And it has to have like 3 mil and 2 mil on each side. Um, that's the, the distance between each grade of the lamp houses. It's quite a um, catchy little install. Uh, and then in terms of the real D, the real D basically has a uh, it's just like a panel, like they call it a um, Z. I'm just not sure I've got exactly what it's called, but it's just got this screen that sits in front of the lens. And basically, it is a polarizing screen, and depending on the voltage going left to right through it, it polarizes left to right, so you've got polarization. And then your glasses that you wear are light and inexpensive glasses, this is why it's quite popular. Um, because glasses are inexpensive and disposable. Uh, usually, you get them, you can see the film, you can take them with you. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and it, it works quite well. So it's, most, it's currently the most popular due to the fact that the, the most of it was the, the glasses are uh, the cheapest of all systems. But the expand system, which is basically like what IMAX has been using, uh, it's quite simple. I'll just show you the kit quickly. Those are the current glasses, but there are some ones coming out soon. They're actually quite funky. You actually have to turn them on. I'm sure if you can see it, but when I turn them on, you might see a change in colour. See that? It's not really seeming to do anything because it's nothing running, but you can see them change and trying to sync up. They'll turn themselves off eventually as they just did then because they're not really getting the signal which um, is telling them to keep going. So there you go. <coughs> now, let's have a look at the, the kit. There's the box there. Basically, out of every projector, um, they have a nice big 
plug like this, uh, the GPIO plug. And out of there um, is a SIG pulse, which comes in based on the signal coming out of here. It knows how often to send the SIG pulse. That SIG pulse then goes down to the box. And then if it was getting a pulse, you'd have a red light here. And then you can output that pulse to a number of emitters, IR emitters. You'll see one up here just, just um, sitting in the port glass, pointing out to the theatre. Basically, um, this is all you really need. It actually is quite amazing. It basically pushes the light out, bounces it off the screen, and back towards all the patrons. Um, we've tested this in this theatre, uh, in every seat, and uh, no problem whatsoever. Um, though it's, it's strange that you can have more than one emitter. But yes, um, that's all, all that needs to happen. And as you can see, simply unplugging it from here, taking that and that, and we can move it to another theatre, which is really good, because um, you need to move films from larger to smaller theatres as they start to go through, and you, you need to keep up with your contracts, etc., about how often you show it, and you know all those political things about being a cinema owner and showing film. Anyway, so that's one of the 3D systems, um, and uh, I must admit I saw a test screening of Bolt on it um, yesterday, and it's amazing. Bolt's going to be a big film. Um, very good start. I, I, very, you know, I loved it. Loved it. Can't can't say a lot much more about it. Anyway, that's about 3D. Um, we will also be getting some other 3D systems in here for testing and comparison. We're a bit of a site that's going to be compar comparing and allowing other cinema owners come in and compare systems. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.